number of deaths surging in the U.S. New York experiencing its deadliest day yet in the COVID-19 outbreak. The death toll up by 562, now standing at nearly 3,000, with more than 100,000 people now testing positive for the virus. Nearby New Jersey, cases still soaring. The governor ordering all flags at half staff to honor those who have died from COVID-19. The surge also being felt in Florida, where confirmed cases have gone up by 20% in one day. And in Louisiana, where the governor says they'll run out of hospital beds by next week. Around the state say they've been overwhelmed by the demand for coronavirus testing, causing frustration. We were overwhelmed yesterday with the response to um, people wanting testing. Urgent Care Hawaii says this drive-up service was deluged by requests for coronavirus tests, some waiting as long as four hours. Here's my question, guys. What's the game here? You're smart people. Why are they whipping us into a panic? Why are they lying about massive lines of people at testing centers? Night after night being told there are these long lines of people being managed at the urgent care, that they're being overwhelmed. Some waiting as long as four hours. Actually, the president or CEO of urgent care, while I was in front of the place, was telling me, we're doing the best we can managing these massive lines. I'm like, I'm here, lady. Repeat what you just said, please. Well, last Friday, I received a seven page document that sort of told me that if I had an 86 year old patient that had pneumonia but was never tested for COVID 19, but sometime after she came down with pneumonia, we learned that she had been exposed to her son who had no symptoms but later on was identified with COVID 19, that it would be appropriate to diagnose on the death certificate COVID 19. Now we've not done that. If someone has the pneumonia after, and, and it's in the middle of a flu epidemic and I don't have a test on influenza, I don't diagnose influenza on the death certificate. I will say uh, this elderly patient Sir, died of pneumonia. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, I, my heart is sinking right now as you're telling me this. You're, you're a doctor. Why in the world would they be sending you out information to fill out death certificates, whether the person's been diagnosed with COVID-19 or not, but then to say in the death certificate, this person's death was caused by COVID-19? That, that does not sound right to me. 
I went to the person in our office who does most of the death certificates over the last, you know, 10, 20 years. And I said, does this sound right? I had her look at the documents that I printed it off. And she said, well, we've always been told that you always put down just facts. You don't put down any probabilities. You don't put any presumptions down. It's just what you know. And so this is concerning. And, and it actually gets to your point, Chris, when we start talking about the data that goes into the modeling, we have to ask ourselves a question. Are we being forthright? Are we sharing with the public? Minnesota, North Dakota, we don't need to be having it sugarcoated. We want to know but, what's going into your modeling. So with that being said, why would they want to skew the number of deaths due to COVID-19? Well, fear is a great way to control people. And fear is a great way to control people. And Fear is a great way to control people. And I worry about that. I worry that sometimes we're so darn interested in just jazzing up the fear factor. Last week, Dr. Michael Ryan, he's a leader of the World Health Organization, announced that in response to the spread of this virus, authorities may have to enter people's homes and remove family members, presumably by force. Hey everybody, good afternoon. Hope you're having a great day today. It's Dr. Naputi. Uh, I got some things that we need to talk about today. We need to have a conversation and Common Sense Nation needs to wake up. Uh, I wanna, wanna share some things with everybody. I had a good friend of mine send me something today that is just absolutely, just absolutely crazy. Because I'm done with it. I've literally, this is my last straw. Why the hell this is not all over the news? Why the hell this is not all over TV is just, it blows my mind. It's because the media is out against you. It's fake news. There's so much bullshit going on, it's not even funny. So here's some bullshit. Let me tell you about this right here. This was sent to me this morning. You guys see this? It says this. This is a news article that was done by a uh, fake news in uh, Louisiana. Let me tell you what the hell it said. This is mm, pisses me off. Um, w, uh, WAFB um, Gary Media Group. Anybody that knows anybody, WAFB Gary Media Group, this is, you guys need to have, call me because we need to have a conversation and we need to take you out to the broom closet and you know what that means. Now listen to me. It says one day old, one day old Louisiana girl dies of COVID-19. Okay, that's what it says from coronavirus. It says one day old dies from coronavirus in Louisiana. You guys better share this because I'm telling you, I'm about to drop a bomb on you. Why the hell this is not all over local TV is beyond me. Now listen, it says one day old girl dies from coronavirus in Louisiana. Then you click on the hyperlink. You click on the link that, that the original story comes from. Now here's the original story. Listen to this. Premature baby dies from COVID-19 complications in Louisiana. Totally different. Right here it says one day old baby dies of coronavirus in Louisiana. This is fake news. Okay, this is not. Let me tell you what happened. It says right here, one day old baby girl dies from complications due to COVID-19. According to East Baton Rouge Parish Coroner Bo Clark, MD, Clark says a, a pregnant mother was admitted to Baton Rouge Hospital April 1st with COVID-related symptoms, including shortness of breath and fever. She was placed on a ventilator and tested positive for COVID-19. Okay, now listen. The mother went into premature labor, delivered the daughter at 22 weeks early. 22 weeks early. You guys, at 20 weeks is when you find out the sex of the baby. Okay, so 22 weeks, the baby's not even, it's halfway done cooking. Okay, so the baby dies from that. The baby didn't survive. It didn't die from COVID-19. The baby did not die. Now, every mother in Louisiana, every mother across the world that sees this article, every person that's pregnant is going to be scared shitless because some a-hole is allowing this to happen. Now, I can't get on an airplane and yell bomb. I can't go into a movie theater and yell fire. That's a felony. But these assholes are allowed to propagate fake news. And we're standing there not doing anything about it. It's time for everyone watching to get a cranial rectalectomy right now. Let's pull our heads out of our asses and let's start looking at the truth. Like, this is ridiculous. You're telling me that the state of the affairs in our world are letting people deal with this stuff? 
I mean, if this doesn't agitate you, you have a problem. You have a serious mental problem. If you are going to let somebody put out their fake news and it says one day old baby girl dies from coronavirus in Louisiana, then we go back and we see that the truth behind the story is this. The truth is the baby died because the mother got sick. We don't know what the mother's underlying health issues were. She got put on a ventilator. The baby was born at 22 weeks premature. At 20 weeks is when you know the birth of the sex of your baby. The baby wasn't done cooking. And they basically said, the coroner says, the baby died from COVID-19. That's wrong. Okay? Right off the presses this morning. This is in the Herald Tribune out of uh, Sarasota, Florida. Okay? Coronavirus Florida is the headline. Sarasota Memorial Hospital furloughs staff members after $16 million decline. $16 million decline. Every hospital around the country, here locally in St. Louis, we know for a fact that the hospitals are down, and this one's down $16 million since, since the beginning of this coronavirus. Shouldn't they be up? Shouldn't they be up with, with people in the ERs, people in the hospitals, people getting tested? Shouldn't they be up? Shouldn't they be up massively because everybody's going to the hospital? No, they're down. Gunshot wounds are down. Fight, you know, people are going to the ER is down, going to their doctors down, they're down, but $16 million they're down, so they're furloughing, they're laying off their healthcare workers. Guess what? Coming to a hospital near you. I know already in St. Louis that there's doctors and nurses being laid off. I know already in Illinois where we're right next to practicing, there's doctors and nurses being laid off. You guys are being lied to, propagated to by the false news, fake narratives that are out there. People are trying to get us all riled up and in a panic. Again, if you or me go into a public building and we yell fire and there's no fire, guess what happens? We get felonies. We get sued. We go to jail. Uh, if you go on an airplane and yell bomb, you'll never be able to fly on a plane again. But yet they can do stuff like making these claims. It's just bullshit. It's wrong. And somebody's got to stand up for it. And why? This is America. Like, and I know some of you watching are watching all over the world, but you know what? We stand for something in this country. We've got a constitutional republic that we've got Bill of Rights. We've got freedom of speech. We've got all this kind of stuff. And those liberties are being torn from us, and that's not okay. And the fact that you're sitting there not doing anything about it, washing your hands and staying at home, you need to wake up because your liberties are getting taken away from you all because of fake news that's out there. You're not going to see that on CNN, NBC, Fox News, or local. They're all saying the same thing. Go do yourself a favor and look up this. Go look up Operation Mockingbird. Now, here's my foil hat going on. Okay, go look it up. Every media outlet across the country is being fed, spoon-fed a story to tell you. Go look it up. Operation Mockingbird, okay? Those of you that like it, that's your decision. Those of you that don't, that's your decision. But you need to get informed. What you do with the information is up to you. Whatever you want to use is fine. But you guys, wake up. Like, we're being lied to so much. And I just am so frustrated. Like, as a doctor, it's my job to take care of my community. That's my job. You, you doctors that are watching this, and I see a lot of you right here. Why are you not getting loud? And the, the headlines were, baby dies of coronavirus. Now, did you guys see earlier last week or late last week there was a, a story out of Connecticut where the where the uh, the governor came out, tweeted and said a, baby, a child an infant died in Connecticut of coronavirus, and then the parents came out and said no my child did not die of coronavirus my child had an accident at home and died from that it is just crazy. Please, you guys, go back and watch this. Share this because I promise you this video is going to get removed today. I promise you that there's no way in hell the powers that be are going to let this video get out. I promise you. And by the way, I can promise you this. Next month, I'm going to get more audits from the IRS, from the insurance companies, from Medicare and everybody else. Because when a doctor speaks up and speaks out about the truth, the powers that be come after the doctor to suppress him and shut him up. That's the world we're living in right now. How many of y'all think that's okay? It's not. Now, I'm telling you right now, we can get healthier. We can beat this stuff, but we got to wake up. We got to start seeing. It's 2020. It's time to start seeing the world of 2020 vision. And I'm telling you right now, you need to wake up and look around. Next time you see a major headline, look for the story that brought that story out. Look and see, well, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. Your spider sense started tingling. This is not real journalism, people. Right now, what should be happening is people should be going to hospitals right now. I mean, independent people should be going and ask to volunteer at hospitals and see how crazy it is. 
journalists should be going inside of the emergency rooms and the ICUs to find out what the hell is really going on in there. That's what needs to be done because right now there are people all over the world going to hospitals and ERs and ICUs and they're not seeing the craziness that's being reported. And I'm not I'm not saying that COVID-19 is not, the, not a real deal. I'm not saying it's not a virus. It sure is. We don't have a cure for it, just like we don't have a cure for the cold or the cure for the flu or anything else. And oh, by the way, don't you think it's really interesting if you look at the stats of how of how not right now all the COVID-19 coronavirus deaths are rising. Guess what's dropping massively? Deaths from pneumonia, deaths from the flu, and deaths from, uh, from heart disease and heart attacks. Don't you think it's a bit ironic? What, are people not dying from heart attacks anymore? Are people not dying from, from pneumonia? Are they not dying from the flu? Nope, apparently COVID-19 and coronavirus fixed that. So now every person that dies now, for the most part, is getting labeled toe tag with COVID-19 coronavirus. Think about that, people. I don't know what to tell you other than it's crazy. And every one of you better share this information with everybody on your contact list. And when I get done, you should start a watch party about this. People need to know what's going on and what's possible. And if you missed it from the beginning, you better go back and watch this thing because you're being lied to. Little babies that claim to be dying in... in uh, in, in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana from COVID-19. Shame on you for reporting that. Shame on that. Shame, shame, shame on that uh, governor from Connecticut that reported that a little baby was killed, uh, died from COVID-19 coronavirus, and they come to find out the parents came out and said, no, my child had an accident at home. That that guy right now needs to have a resignation. I'm calling for that guy's resignation. All of you in Connecticut, I'm sure some of you guys are there. Your governor needs to resign right now for spreading fake news. They're spreading blatant lies that are going to kill people. Blatant lies that are going to kill people. Not to mention kill our economy. You guys, I'm just telling you, I'm not taking it anymore. My gloves are off. I've been polite. I've been politically correct. I've been nice about it. But I'm not taking this shit anymore. You shouldn't either. Please welcome to the podium Dr. Annie Bukacek. Thank you, and thank you for the introduction. At a time where telling the truth is considered a threat to national security, we're very blessed to have a pastor who tells us the truth. We are blessed beyond measure. So I'm going to read this so that I make sure I don't ex give excessive commentary. So I'm going to talk about death certificates today. The decision for unprecedented government mandated lockdowns has been based on the alleged death rate of COVID-19. Is this death rate based on truth? I posted the following question on Facebook yesterday. This is the question. Know anybody personally with baseline good health who has been hospitalized for COVID-19 alone or allegedly died from COVID-19? That was my question. I asked the question this way because if you know someone personally, you may know their baseline health status and some details of the case. And being tested positive for COVID-19 does not mean you have the disease. Even asking the question this specifically, I still got some people saying their spouse knows a friend of a friend who's of a nephew in New York. And some who answered yes, but didn't give the details, even though I asked them, could you please submit some more details? I got over 350 comments and received dozens of no answers, if not scores. Last I counted, there were three or four who answered yes and said their case fit the criteria, and they gave me some details. But even those three or four, giving them the benefit of the doubt that they were answering honestly to the best of their knowledge, does that mean the person they described was actually stricken with COVID-19? Inquiring minds want to know, are the reported deaths from COVID-19 truly deaths from COVID-19? To address this question, we need to discuss death certificates since death certificates are the basic source of information about mortality. Let's say it's a sick patient who goes into respiratory arrest at home. He is intubated at home by EMTs. They put a tube down his throat to help him breathe. He's taken to the hospital by ambulance, put on a ventilator in the ICU, put on antibiotics for presumed sepsis, given IV fluids because his blood pressure has bottomed out. The bacteria pneumococcus is found in the blood in sputum cultures. Pneumonia is seen on the chest x-ray. Despite the staff's best eff efforts, he dies two days after admission. Like I said, this is not an uncommon scenario. The patient was found to be COVID-19 positive 
and the doctor has the option of listing on the death certificate that COVID-19 is the immediate or antecedent cause because the doctor theorizes that COVID-19 contributed. Either way, it goes into the data bank as caused by COVID-19. To reiterate, if a patient tests positive for COVID-19 and dies from another cause such as pneumococcal sepsis, it may be considered accurate to say that person died with COVID-19, not from COVID-19. Yet the CDC guidelines list as one more, they list this case as one more COVID-19 death and they go to the next questionable death. They label that as COVID-19 and it goes on and on. You could see how these statistics have been made to look really scary when it is so easy to add false numbers to the official database. Those false numbers are sanctioned by the CDC as of their memo yesterday, April 4th. I have made physical copies of those memos in case more people start looking at their website and they decide it's too much truth for us. I hope I was able to make my point. The real number of COVID-19 deaths are not what most people are told and what they then think. How many people have actually died from COVID-19 is anyone's guess. Again, God only knows. But based on how death certificates are being filled out, you can be certain the number is substantially lower than what we are being told. Based on inaccurate, incomplete data, people are being terrorized by fear mongers into relinquishing cherished freedoms. Thank you. Oh, and I, had, I, have, a little, I have a little PS. Um, forgot about, uh, you can't have a true case fatality rate without testing massive numbers of people, but that is another topic. What is that old saying? Something along the line, figures don't lie, but liars sure can figure. Thank you.